Welcome to Our Girl Relationships. We talk about the problems people face in their day-to-day -day lives. Let's start with the video. Casey is my best friend, and we have been friends since high school. We are a classic case of opposites attract. I'm the nerd who prefers to be home on my own, while Casey is the bubbly, party-going, fun-loving type. For some weird reason, we work and are perfect for each other. Casey doesn't deal very well with stress, and recently she has been under a lot of it. Her sister passed, giving birth to a child, and the father wasn't in the picture. I don't know if Casey really knew him. This came as a shocker to her. It completely turned her life upside down because she was now responsible for this child. All while mourning her twin sister. She wasn't handling it well, and I helped her out as much as possible. Casey did not want to have a family. Maybe she would change her mind later, but she would have preferred that to be her choice instead of a child being dropped on her lap. Casey wanted a very flexible life and did a great job building that for herself. She was a freelance photographer and did a lot of graphic designing. Her profession made her travel a lot, which was precisely what she wanted. Casey was at the top of her career when this happened. It was honestly a tragedy. You could not get Casey to stay put. And now, knowing that she had to stay put for a child that wasn't hers, was very hard for her to wrap her head around. She didn't want to be a mother and wasn't ready when her sister died. Her sister had many complications during pregnancy, but still wanted to continue carrying her baby. She was strong, but her strength couldn't carry her through childbirth. For the past eight months since her sister died, she hasn't been able to take any gig, and I knew it was getting to her. So we agreed that the next gig she got, she would take it so she could get a breather and rest from everything. Amazingly, she had to cover a wedding at some resort, so she decided to do it and stay a few more weeks for her vacation. I was swamped then, so I couldn't help with her niece. It was tax season and I was buried in work. I called her on the day that she was to travel to ensure she was ready and everything was sorted. She answered and hurriedly said she didn't want to miss her flight, so she had to go. We said our goodbyes. This was around 9 a.m. I was surprised to get a call from CPS asking for Casey's whereabouts. I told them that she had gone on vacation and that a sitter was to take care of her niece. When Casey asked me to do it and saw that I was unavailable, she said she would arrange for someone to help her. She had even asked me if I knew any nannies preferably someone older, so she was sure they could take care of her niece. I sent her a few contacts. The lady from CPS said her neighbor called, saying that there was a baby in the house who had been crying for hours, and she was scared that something was happening to the baby. She also mentioned that she saw Casey leave in the morning. I couldn't believe my ears. I knew Casey was having difficulty with the baby, but I didn't think she would be this careless. I called Casey several times that evening, but didn't get through. I was lucky to have still met the CPS officials when I arrived at Casey's house. Everything was true. She had left her niece there and traveled. There had to be some reasonable explanation for this. The officials asked me to call them once I heard from Casey, which I agreed to do. They left with her niece. At this point, I was confused. I thought she had already gotten someone to take care of her niece while she was away. I low-key blamed myself because I was the one who advised her not to reject her next gig. I just thought she needed a break and that she would be rejuvenated and ready to be all her niece needed her to be when she came back. I got a call from a different number and I just knew it had to be Casey. I was right. I had so many questions to ask, but knowing Casey, if I had bombarded her, she wouldn't say anything. So I forced myself to calm down and let her speak. She said she was so tired 
and couldn't do it any longer. She didn't want a baby, so she made sure that she couldn't get one. Having her sister die was already much for her, so adding a newborn was extremely stressful. She hadn't the slightest idea how to be a mother and was failing. Casey said she didn't want to let her late sister down since she was her only family, so she agreed to be her guardian and try these past months. She said she couldn't even get a babysitter and that was it for her. She realized she couldn't do it any longer. That was why she seemed in a, such a hurry when I called because she didn't want me to find out and try to change her mind. She told me that she had connected her CCTV to her phone. So she was watching to see what would happen. She said her flight was in the evening, but she had purposely left early so someone would notice that a child was in the house. Once she saw her neighbor notice, she decided that she could go. Her plan was never to return this way until the dust had settled because she was sure that CPS or maybe even the police would try to look for her. According to her, that was the only way she could give her niece a better life since she wasn't a good mother, as the last eight months had proven. Casey was struggling more than I knew, and now there was nothing I could do. The deed was already done, and the authorities are aware. I wish she had confided in me. I could have gotten someone, even if it was my grandma, to help out. I'm sure she would have been happy to assist with her niece since she was not working anymore and always looked for something to occupy her time. It just didn't cross my mind until now. Casey begged me not to tell CPS where she was and that she would leave for somewhere else immediately after she was done with the wedding. She wasn't going to tell me where she would be because it was safer that way. Casey is my best friend and she has been there for me too many times and I can count. I feel like I let her down and am so sorry that I can't help her right now. The same lady from CPS called to find out if I had heard from Casey, and I lied. I lied to protect my best friend, but I don't know if that was the right thing to do. I feel horrible because I can't even say it to anyone close to me. I haven't been myself since the whole incident, and everyone can tell that something is up because I'm not good at hiding when something is wrong. I decided I'll tell my family only part of the story. They had a lot to say, and I honestly didn't want to hear it. Some of them spoke about how irresponsible and selfish Casey was being and has always been. That's why she didn't want a family and couldn't take care of her sister's baby. Some sympathized with her and hoped she didn't get in trouble, while the very nosy wanted me to tell them every detail. My mom advised me to report to the authorities once I heard from Casey. I looked at her surprised as she reaffirmed it, saying she didn't want me getting in trouble because I wanted to keep my friends secret. She told me to leave it alone and let the authorities handle the situation, however they saw fit. My mom knew me too well, so she went on and on about me reporting Casey. Thank God she hadn't figured that I already spoke to her. This means that I'm on my own and no one around me can know what is happening. After all that has happened to Casey, it still kills me to lie to the authorities. I am beyond scared for my life and I can't report her. I called the lady at CPS for some updates because I knew Casey would want to know what would happen with her niece. She told me that they would put her in the system. However, for now, they are taking care of her while the authorities are looking for Casey because she agreed to be her guardian after her sister died. So she couldn't have just run away like that. I asked her to update me on the baby and if the authorities find Casey because I would like to know what happened with her. I already know I did that as a cover-up, so they don't suspect me. NTA, I completely understand your position and you feel like no side is correct. If you report to the authorities, Casey will get in trouble. If you don't, it may affect her niece. I don't think even if they find Casey, they will return her niece to her, so 
I say, just let it be. YTA. Casey needs to face the law for what she did. She agreed to be the legal guardian of that child, so what happens to her is her responsibility. What if something terrible happened to her when Casey was away? Yes, you say she was watching with the CCTV, but how fast could she have gotten back or gotten help if something went wrong? She needs to serve some jail time and serve as a deterrent for others who think they can do as they please. A child is not a toy. My boyfriend Jay, male 35, and I, female 33, recently moved in together. We love our new apartment and try to take good care of it. On the regular, I definitely pick up more of the household chores than he does, but he does a decent amount to keep things clean. Jay's parents are coming to visit for Thanksgiving, and I will not be here. I'm going home to visit my parents this year. His parents visit a lot. I'm talking like every two to three weeks since my boyfriend's older sister recently had a baby, and she lives in the same city as us. He also has a younger brother who lives near us. Jay's parents are insistent on staying at our apartment over his brother or sister's place when they come to visit because they find it the most comfortable. I like his parents, but do find their constant visits a little overwhelming. Jay agrees but isn't comfortable confronting them about it. Anyway, their last visit was three weeks ago. Jay had a business trip scheduled. They asked if they could still stay with me even though Jay wasn't going to be around. I asked Jay if they could maybe stay at one of his siblings' place instead, but our place is definitely the biggest and most comfortable, so he felt bad asking them to cram into his brother or sister's spot. It wasn't a huge deal, so I agreed. The day before they were set to arrive, Jay left on his business trip. He'd had a stressful week, and so the apartment was pretty messy when he left. I didn't want his parents to come to stay in a messy place, so I spent my whole Friday night cleaning for their visit, doing all the laundry and putting it away, washing all the sheets and towels for them, and setting up the guest bed, dishes, and vacuuming. Jay was very grateful, but If I'm being completely honest, I was a little annoyed by the situation, me hosting his parents and being the only one prepping for their arrival despite there being other family members nearby who could have stepped in. I did share that with Jay and he understood and apologized for putting me in that situation. Anyway, his parents are set to arrive tomorrow and Jay and I have both been slammed with work for the past few days. I left to go home to my family today and admittedly left the place a little messy because I was stressed and rushing. Jay just got home from work and texted me, saying he's super annoyed that I left the apartment messy and saying he doesn't have time to properly clean it before his parents arrive. I pointed out how I cleaned and took care of his parents without his help last time and mentioned that he's not the only one busy with work and that we both need to be taking care of things equally around the house. He told me I was being spiteful and is now being short and cold towards me. I really feel like he's viewing this situation selfishly, but he seems very annoyed with me. A-I-T-A? N-T-A. He did no cleaning before his trip and you did all the work. Now the tables have turned and he criticizes you. Nope, that's not going to work. He should have done some cleaning before his last trip or looked at the two situations as being the same and sucked it up and done the cleaning for Thanksgiving without complaint. No one likes to do all of the cleanings, but sometimes you have to. And he's going to have to tell his parents they can only stay over once every three months. They have other kids. Let them stay with their other children. It's unfair for you to have to be their host every time. I was on the fence at first, but halfway through, it's clear your NTA. It's basically a repeat of what happened when your boyfriend had to leave. Except you're the one leaving instead. 
I don't see what's so unfair about the situation. Also, not for nothing, but if his parents are visiting this often, they shouldn't expect a spotless place every time they're over, if it's once a month. Especially around the holidays, like people get busy and sometimes it's not possible to have everything spotless. So there's some laundry piled up. Maybe the dishwasher is full and still needs to be run, unloaded. Maybe the garbage is a little full, etc. Sounds like you guys need to have a chat about expectations about his parents visiting and explain to them that if they're going to be coming so often, that on occasion the place might be a bit messy. And if they don't like that, then there's always boyfriends, siblings to stay at. Yeah, you're deaf, not TA. NTA, your answer to him hits the nail on the head. It's a shared responsibility. And if he lets household work pile up as much as you did, he is in no place to be angry at you. Especially after those situations where you had to spend much time cleaning the pile happened before and could have led to improvement in chore management. I, 25 female, have been looking after my mom, 52 female, and my oldest sister, 35 female, since I was 14 years old. My oldest sister has always been reckless with money and has no goals in life. I know she has past trauma, but I honestly just don't care. Since I was 14, I have been working giving all my money to my mom to support the household as she's physically unable to work and my older sister loses every job she gets. She always seems to lose her job after a month or so because she turns up late all the time or just doesn't go in. My mom and her are always arguing as she comes home drunk. My mom is a Muslim and doesn't drink. And she leaves alcohol bottles all over the place, near my mom's praying spaces, etc. She's always yelling about how hard her life is, and she's a victim. And she's always helping us, and we take advantage of her kindness. She's taken my mom to maybe 10 hospital appointments in the last 20 years. She cries that she's depressed, and we are stressing her out when we try to question her behavior and get her help. I've had to be the breadwinner and worked throughout school and worked full-time while studying a full-time degree as well. Without me, she wouldn't even have a roof over her head. I have been paying for all the bills since I was a child. She's never thanked me. She's never shown any gratitude that I've had to deal with every single financial issue in this house. I am now in a position where I can afford to move out into my own place and I'm leaving next month. We currently live in government-supported housing, and I've arranged for my mom to move into a one-bedroom flat, and I've told my sister she has one month to move out as mom's new place is only a one-bedroom, and the local council won't let her live there as it'll be overcrowded. I have refused to tell her the new address and told her if she moves in with mom, I will report her for overcrowding the flat. Since then, she's been telling all of our extended family that I'm making her homeless, kicking her out on the street, and that I'm the a-hole. My family is now blowing up my phone telling me that I'm a bad person and I simply do not care. I have no sympathy for her, and if she ends up on the streets, I truly do not give a damn. AITA here? NTA, your sister has gone long enough in her adult life to know that bills have to be paid. She's gotten used to being a mooch and getting her way. Tell your family that if they're so worried about her well-being and they don't want her to be homeless, then they can support her and let her move in with them. But you're done. It's admirable that you're taking care of your mom and that you found a place for her. Make sure your mom understands that the apartment is for her and that if she lets anyone move in with her, then you won't pay for it. That will be the next attempt to circumvent your decision. Your mom will fall for the guilt trip and your sister will be there before you can sneeze.
every family member that contacts you about this. Thank you for volunteering to provide sister with a place to stay. I will let her know she can move in any time. Just repeat that. You have taken good care of your mother. And seriously, the disrespect of your sister on display, alcohol near a prayer place, I'm not religious, but I wouldn't do that. Just not okay. Might be why those people are blaming you. They are afraid of her becoming their problem. Your sister is, legally, an adult, mentally, not able to judge. So, therefore, she is not your problem, not your responsibility. She is her own problem and responsibility. Your solution for your mother, the one-bedroom apartment, is great, saves her from being taken advantage of. Also, if those people continue to harass you, feel free to block them or reply with the above suggestion and add to that just how much your sister has helped you and your mother. You are just stopping taking advantage of your sister's generosity. They should be happy. NTA, at a certain, you can't keep enabling this behavior from your older sister because one day your mom will be gone and she will be looking for you to support her. You deserve to have your own life and spend your own money on what you want. It's not your responsibility to support a grown adult. It's best to do it now than later. Your mom can have some peace and your sister, hopefully, can learn to be independent and stable. Let the rest of your family be mad because they aren't lifting a finger to help this situation.